Hi friends, welcome inside our Los Angeles studios. This is NBA Today on YouTube. This is where we have the extra bits, the exclusive bits, the behind the scenes bits, the parts that aren't quite as formal with Perk, with Austin Rivers, myself, Malika Andrews, and the director of grumpiness, Zach Lowe himself. But you're not grumpy today. <laughs> Wow. You're not, that's what you, you If we're informal, around, should right? I start unbuttoning buttons Please. like Richard Jefferson? Should we all, should we all <laughs> do the argument? No, no, don't do it. Oh, I'm Zach. not grumpy. I'm happy today. I know, and you're particularly happy because we are talking about the color. You can't really see my pants. I'm wearing kind of wearing King's purple. The Sacramento Kings, they waxed the Los Angeles Lakers. They were up big. They let the Lakers back in the door a little bit, but they looked wire to wire impressive, essentially, against L.A. yesterday. They're a team that ended their huge playoff drought last year and ne th now they really do have expectations for you what impressed you most about the Kings yeah we made a collective audible we're done talking about all this other stuff the Draymond's the Lakers we're talking about the Kings who came in and beat the Lakers last night pretty handily they're four and one with the Aaron Fox in the lineup he looks sensational they're plus 15 per 100 possessions which is like mega good with Fox and Sabonis on the floor the Kings are a really good team. Let's talk about some really good teams. Like, are they one piece away from being really, really good? Maybe we can talk about that. But let's give these guys some love. They're missing Trey Lyles. They're missing Davion Mitchell right now. And as soon as De'Aaron Fox came back, they look like the Kings fast. again. I mean, that, that, the, the, from the opening tip, it took three seconds for De'Aaron Fox to score on Crypto.com. Right I, I just remember when the Kings traded Tyrese Halliburton, and we all was thinking, what are y'all doing? This is what they was doing. They were fully saying that we're fully invested into the Aaron Fox, the most exciting player in the NBA in my eyes. And when I think about the Kings, when I think about Sabonis, I think about Keegan Murray. I'm thinking about uh, Malik Monk. And I'm like, what are they missing? They have heard of um, they have the kid that they the, that they got from overseas. I can't think. Help me out, Zach. Pazenkov. Oh yes, yes. Who can shoot the ball extremely well? You added a veteran leader in the locker room, Javale McGee. This this team is only missing more ex experience in the postseason, mm -hmm. right? Like every single season, their goal is to advance around and get around better, right? Like last year they were bouncing the first round. This year they need to make their goal second round peak conference finals. But I just think this organization is heading in the right direction. And I and I believe that De'Aaron Fox is a top three point guard in this league. Yeah, he's one of the most explosive guards we've had since Derrick Rose, Russell Westbrook, John Wall. He's kind of that new coming of that mm -hmm. guard. You can see when he's back, the speed at which they play is just totally different. Yeah. And the weapons around him are perfectly placed. It's nothing but shooting. At every single corner, you can have a guy that can knock down a three, whether that's Harrison Barnes, Malik Monk, Kevin Herter, Keegan Murray, there are multiple guys who can go for big, big nights from behind the arc, which leads to high scoring, high pace. Uh, they're a really fun team to watch. And Mike Brown has done a great job of turning that, job. that yes. whole culture around. Unanimous coach of the year last yep. year, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you could see the impact. One of my favorite clips before this season was him getting on Malik Monk. I don't know if, that, if you guys ever yeah. saw that clip. He was really like cussing, screaming out Malik Monk, who's a veteran in the NBA, you know, a guy who makes good money, a guy who has a big role. He's setting the tone there that, you know, holding everyone accountable. You can just see that's all within the culture and how it's been changed over there. They're, they're a young team. I exciting. Yeah, I sat down with um, De'Aaron Fox earlier this season. I sat down with him and Steph Curry, and Steph was talking about how much he sees himself in, in De'Aaron Fox, how he sees parts of his game, parts of his character, the, the, certainly the speed mm -hmm. at which he plays, and he sort of challenged uh, De'Aaron. He was like, I'm not quite ready to hand the keys to you yet. I still had to drop 50 on you and send you, you know, packing in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And then De'Aaron Fox is like, okay, yeah, well, now I'm starting to wear your shoes and I want to bust your ass in your own shoes. Like, yeah. that's what he was saying to the two-time MVP, to the finals MVP, Steph Curry. Uh, but, Zach, you said one piece away. And when you look at sort of the fire sales that could be happening in the NBA, potentially the Raptors, you know, we've heard some rumblings about the Chicago Bulls this week and whether or not they're going to be taking calls on uh, Zach Levine. Could someone there help them? What is the piece that you think that they're missing to get to that place that Perk's talking about out of the first round? I think all the players that we've named are really good players. Mm. Fox is a superstar. Yeah. Sabonis is an all-star. I just look at the three starters between those two, Kevin Herter, Harrison Barnes, and Keegan Murray. Those guys are all good. I'm not sure together those three at the 2-3-4 is like a true <clears throat> conference finals 
two, three, four. I think they need to upgrade. They don't have to do it. Like, they're good and they're rising like this. But if they want to really make a jump, I think one of those positions has to be upgraded, at least in the short term. And they have the goods to do it. But that doesn't mean they got to do it. They can just enjoy the ride they're on, wait to see who becomes available in the summer, whatever. But if you're asking me, like, to really become a serious playoff team, conference finals type playoff team, those are the positions I'm looking at. And the question you got to ask yourself is, are they looking to, to be a team that's looking for the sprint or the marathon? I'm looking at them as the marathon. If I'm the Kings, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, trade any of my young pieces. No Keegan I'll, Murray. Keegan no Murray's Keegan off Murray. the table for sure. I would to be keep clear. this team because the chemistry, the vibe is there, right? Everybody is bought in. It only takes one player to come in and disrupt this whole thing. Look at <clears throat> look at the Clippers situation. But I'm just saying, I would let them <laughs> go through their growing pains and every single season set their goal and just continue to go yeah. upward and not down. So we're obviously we're we're only 12 games into the season, 13 games into the season. You don't stop. Looking, I know. I'm I'm sorry. I was told <laughs> that I can't say that anymore. So I'm done. The Nuggets sit at the top of the West. Mm -hmm. Behind them are uh, the Dallas Mavericks. Do you think the Kings could take the Dallas Mavericks? In the seven <laughs> series, I'm taking the Sacramento Kings. Okay. The Minnesota Timberwolves currently sit at third in a seven-game series. Kings versus Timberwolves. Who? Timberwolves. You're taking the T-Wolves. You're taking the T-Wolves. Yeah, you're taking the T-Wolves. Uh, the Rockets sit at fourth. Do Rockets make a noise? They are making a noise. Take off like that? The, the, I mean, they, they Not make against it, the Kings. I'm taking saying. the Kings over you're the Rockets. Let's, over let's the Rockets. the brakes a little bit on the Rockets. Yeah, let's, yeah. Like, let's do some repairs on the Rocket ship before we start taking it into outer space. They, 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 they might make the play-in, though. I think the Rockets yeah. do get in the play-in and, and make it They're going to have to play some road games yeah. eventually. Yeah. In yeah, I got, I got we'll more trust in the Rockets right now than I do the Pelicans. Well, the Pelicans right now sit at 10th in the West, and the Rockets sit at 4th. So, yeah. okay. um, The Kings, yeah, and then it's the Thunder and then the Kings. So, you know, if the playoffs started today, which I'm not going to say the thing you told me that I cannot say about the date in which it is right now, it would be Timberwolves. <laughs> well, there's one, be there's one team we didn't mention because they're middling around and they haven't had their guys, but Phoenix is going to be at the top of this conversation. So it's right far. below Denver once yep. they get everybody. Well, that, yeah, yeah those are two in the West. Those are two in the West. But Den you think that this could be the year for the Kings, that they – and when I say the year for the Kings, I mean make it past the first round. They beat yeah. Dallas. Huh? They beat Dallas? Yeah, for sure. I think I agree with Perk. I think I would take the Kings. It, it's over. close. I mean, I'm it's just – look, 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 look at this. that good, yeah, man. And the uh, point's uh, that good. St so, is, so is Steph. And I'm just looking at what they did last year, yeah. taking the Golden State Warriors. Yeah, to seven, and took, meeting that heroic it, – it, it took Steph to really – Dig deep. It took Steph to go outside of his character and have a motivational speech before they got on that damn charter I, bus. I kind of think if Fox doesn't get hurt in that series, they win. Remember, Fox broke the, the tip no of his finger. Well, that, that's fine. Yeah. He, that's great for him. I'm telling, like, if you're if the shooting <laughs> index finger and your right. shooting hand is hurt and you're shooting, what was he like five for twenty in the last game? Right. Like, it wasn't going well for him. I asked him about that. He said no excuses, but I can tell you that performance that he saw from Steph Curry it stuck with him. Because seeing that up close, seeing what it took to beat him, seeing the level that Steph had to go to, he's like, oh, okay. Like, that's why these guys are the four-time champs. And I think he absorbed that. And it's about chess moves, right? And now the Kings are sort of ready to make that next chess move. Okay, before Zach unbuttons any buttons or anything else happens here, we're going to sign off for now. Uh, you can catch us at 3 o'clock Eastern on ESPN and come back here for much more exclusive content. And Austin's Babysitters. Ha, ha, ha.